Hi, it's me, Trix Mattel, and welcome back to The Pit Stop here on the RuPaul's Drag Race YouTube channel, where every week we recap the newest episode of Canada's Drag Race. And this week for episode four, I brought in one of the most iconic queens from the Drag Race canon. She's a makeup artist on the Emmy-nominated series We're Here on HBO. Layla, hello. Oh my God. Hey, Tiffany. So great to be here. <laughs> Honestly, um, you were telling me you haven't been in drag for a while. Me listing those accomplishments, did it seem like a complete different lifetime? <laughs> yeah, uh, because nowadays when I'm not doing this, I'm sitting here waiting to do this. I love that. What's it been like to have a beard? Um, it was great. Um, Seems like it's going great right now. I hate you. Hate, <laughs> hate, hate, hate you. You're extremely creative. What have you been working on during lockdown? I've been sewing a lot. I've been making a lot of jackets and selling them. Like I even made Bob's purple jacket from the pit stop uh, for All Stars. That's actually the first outfit I've made specifically for someone else. Were you just sweating bullets though? Yeah, of course. Cause you know, when you make it for yourself, you're like 12 safety pins like, on the interior, eat my ass. <laughs> Seriously. <laughs> Your clothes are really lit. I mean, all your clothes are lit. Thank you. I'm actually glad we had you for this episode because these whores had to make a lot of stuff. It is very fitting. I don't have a lot of criteria to judge things, but I can yell at people for how they construct garments. So we're only in episode four. What are you thinking of these Canadian queens? I enjoy other countries' drag race because, especially for this one, it's their first season. Even though it's all drag, it's still like fresh and different. And they're all like almost a little more excited and endearing. And I think that's fun to watch. Yeah, and the stakes feel higher. And they're actually better at ignoring the camera because they're not thinking of like their portrayal or like the reality right. of it. They truly seem like eight hours in, they forgot about those cameras. Yes, <laughs> especially Priyanka. They get the most weird little like doing outtakes of her, like hitting her face or like giant owl eyes. <laughs> <laughs> Who's your favorite so far? I really like Rita and Jimbo because they are just freaks. Girl. Rita is really serving. Like, I think that based on her first runway, I didn't know she was gonna be turning it on the runway this hard. And like, oh my God. Okay, well the first runway, I don't know what that was. She sold it, but that was not a couture constructed garment. It was like a blue version of Shangela's country outfit. They, girl, it was just it was. like fabric <laughs> with no nips and no shape. And it was just, and they were like living. And I was like, for what? Derek Berry was at home with her, you know, three husbands being like, there's no him. Derek Berry's sitting, uh, he's doing a cross stitch of a pillow and he looks up and just goes, no him. <laughs> okay, so in the last episode, Anastasia went home and decided not to leave a mirror message. Do you think that's a power move? A, a power move to do what? It's just weird. I mean, it's weird, too. It's so odd. I mean, it's like, okay, I guess in a sense, she's the first one ever in Drag Race history <laughs> to not leave a mirror message, but I don't, I don't get it. I love that she walked up to that mirror and said, <laughs> So one of the storylines in the show is that the Toronto Queens act differently than the other queens. Do you think that holds up like in America, like the whole US versus New York? The whole versus New York. <laughs> in my opinion, <laughs> LA, Chicago, and New York drag represent three, I think, really different cultures entirely. I would say Texas is thrown in there too when oh, it comes good to point. like yeah, drag like race and drag. Like when I lived in Milwaukee and worked in Chicago, we would hear that like the stereotype of us was that we, do really big looks and aren't good performers. We did do things like nail changes. Like I remember Kim and I doing like contact lens changes for numbers. And now looking back, I'm like, what are you doing? Maybe learn the words. I feel like I'm manifesting a sty in this eye, in this eye's getting pink eye, just thinking about after grabbing money for three sweaty minutes, taking out a contact and then jabbing it back into your eye. That is <laughs> disgusting. Disgusting. And by the way, in a dressing room that, especially in like Chicago, Milwaukee, not clean. So <laughs> Tainomi's had to lip sync twice at this point. Do you think at the start of the episode, we're starting to see warning signs with her? Like, is this your time, sis? You know, it's always in, you know, Drag Race world, that kind of thing where either like, oh, I did two lip syncs. You either kind of like be like, I'm about to tap out or it's like you have 
the uprise. The next day, Stacy enters the workroom, which by the way, that's Stacy look. The yellow with the beads. I love a big baggy blouse being like, this is the outfit. <laughs> Hope you like it. A slutty shoe and a giant shirt. Get into it. <laughs> Completely. She basically announces there's a memory game using underwear on the pit crew. I think that Drag Race is doing the Lord's work. Do you think that you're, let's say, I don't want to be vulgar, hungry tendencies would have helped you remember the underwear or black out on who cares what underwear they were wearing? Well, I'd like to say that um, I'm not like a crazy deviant fiend. I'm just like a, a homo. All right. Uh, I get really frazzled when confronted with like overt sexuality like this. So I don't think I would have done well. Would I remember everything because I have great memory? Um, definitely not. But I would have had a good time trying. Your whore ass would have walked in and been like, hey, Steve. Oh, Dan, how's it been? Bitch, no, it would have been just like Priyanka. I'd be like, oh, so you all blocked me. Let's talk about it. Let's <laughs> let's get weird. That was iconic that she was like, uh, oh good, everybody who's ever blocked me. Jimbo wins the mini challenge. Congrats, Jimbo. Woo! I just like love his out of drag energy. Like the person you would not pull out of a police lineup to be a drag queen, because I really relate to that. Okay, but here's the question. If Jimbo is wearing this outfit in his confessions, then what are you wearing when you play The Sims in your house alone? <laughs> well, you know, on my confessional outfit at All Stars was a Western like coat of many colors patchwork shirt, but Jimbo is like full rodeo clown. All right, so for the maxi challenge this week, the girls have to make complete outfits in collections made from recyclable materials, metal, paper, and plastic. So you are a costume constructor yourself. If you had to pick one of these bins, which one would you have wanted? It's tough, but I think plastic. Explain. Okay, metal sounds like an actual living nightmare. Like, I just do not understand how you would put anything together besides gluing metal to a corset. In paper, I am not dainty. I feel like the second I create something beautiful, I'm gonna fall down and it's gonna just rip into a thousand pieces. So plastic, at least, I feel like it has some structure, a little more sturdy, and you can paint it, you can add things on it, it's durable, so you can embellish it more. There's a lot of things you can do with it. I think plastic would have been the move too, because plastic also comes in a lot of different colors. I think I probably would have picked that as well, because like, I'm not like a naked queen, so I'm not gonna do some like, Thank God. Naomi Smalls paper pinned to a naked body. It's just a ruler down the center of your body. <laughs> like, it's yeah. it. Do you think a group design challenge is easier or harder than an individual design challenge? I think, it's always harder in a group challenge like this, where you have to be creative on yourself, but still consider other people, rather than like a group acting challenge where you're all bouncing off of each other. This one's a little more uh, high risk for tension. I agree. Also, you're dealing with three different people's personal style. What is yes. flattering to their body type? Let me go down in flames and be like, I did this to myself. Not like two queens being like, you had to make us do this. And I'm like, I'm sorry, I'm sorry. Which two queens from season eight would you have chosen to be in your group with you for this challenge? Definitely Kim. Absolutely. I don't think people realize Kim used to work with this kind of stuff for the fun of it. Also, Astrid Betty is really great at like designing things and making stuff out of materials. So I'd want her for that, but there's no chance in hell three of us in Acid Bet like with Acid Betty involved, would we all agree on something? You think? Yeah, I feel like there would be some tension with that, but my heart is in the right place when I say Kim and Acid. Okay, so we have Stacy teaching the queens how to work the runway. Which queen do you think had the best walk? I liked Kiara, but she's also just like very tall, skinny, and confident, and that is just like a life I will never ever live. It's great. Oh, did Naomi tell you? <laughs> <laughs> I thought that Priyanka was like awful and then took the criticism and was like, oh. <laughs> She was awful. No, she was bad. And then she got like, she took the coaching and it was like a whole new person. Yes. And then I thought Lemon obviously was like, oh, you're just like a part-time model. Right. She's light in the loafers, right? Yeah. <laughs> she really was like serving it. And then it's fun to watch people struggle like Jimbo. Oh my God. <laughs> it's hysterical. <laughs> do, 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 do. Totally. <laughs> like the music they could have played. Um, and then I thought Tainomi was amazing. Yes. It's like height and powerful and like confident. Yes. Never on US Drag Race has anyone taught the girls how to be like, this is how you can walk better. No, they have to find out in real time getting yelled at. Real time? They have to find out after the fact, a year <laughs> later when they watch it and they're like, oh my God, 
All right, so let's get to the runway here. The category is single use queens. Pause, like Stacey McKenzie's outfit for the main stage this week, this like suit, so good. That is so the- So good. Meanwhile, Amazing. Brooklyn's dressed like Moira Rose. <laughs> Moira that Rose. All black that... with the wig. Like, <laughs> David. Like, it's just Moira Rose. And then Jeffrey with a little eye makeup on was really turning it too. He really is ridiculously good looking. And he's also very, I mean, besides these judging panels, like very nice and endearing. And like, he's, very nice. he's just gorgeous. Let's go through the looks. La Maison. Boraga, which is plastics. First up, we have Scarlet Bobo. This was probably the weakest look of his group, but I liked it. Do you think so? The flat plastic panel belted with like a stretch of plastic. Like I liked the fascinator, I liked the shoulders, but like the body, you know, it's just a flap. I mean, fair, the silhouette wasn't great, but it also wasn't like making her body look horrifically disproportionate. It reminded me kind of like a Hedwig and the Angry Inch cocktail dress. Absolutely. They took brand new plastic and they made it look repurposed, like trash plastic. I also like that they went kind of punky with it and like Scarlet cut it into panels and like had them attach by rings. So it was kind of like disconnected. I thought that yeah. was cool. Okay, up next we have Kiara. I like that she went a gown almost, or like it's it's slutty, but still like elegant. Totally elegant. And she's very beautiful. And we've seen her do these sort of like bottle service girl looks. I mean, let's call them what they are. Yes. <laughs> she's a waitress <laughs> at the strip club. Yeah. <laughs> yes. And so this, you can tell that she embraced the materials, but also really embraced the concept and was like, all right, my group is doing this. I'm doing this. Agreed. I enjoyed it. Her walk is great. She sold it. Uh, this bitch really did something, Miss Rita Baga. She did. I do really love this, but also it drives me wild when a queen wears a corset but has zero shape. I just don't get how that works. It looks like a grocery bag. <laughs> Fully! I mean, luckily with this, because she has big shoulder shapes, it's almost Gareth Pugh. It's a little like Hellraiser. A little bit. I do love her makeup. I love that oh. she went fully for it. I love the whole top. She's nuts. She's committed to selling all these crazy looks. And I really love that about her. I do too. Like this seems like the centerpiece of this collection. All right, so Miss Boa, what'd you think? The judges were not living because they said she does too many like peekaboo jokey stuff. I'm glad that Boa felt good wearing that. That feels like a read, but I actually thought it was cool. I mean, I didn't think those titties were gonna open. I was wild when they opened. I mean, she's wearing metal. What do you want her to do with metal? I know, I, she sold it. It's funny. It's just like, she is wearing a diaper and just like tin foil blankets on her waist. And I don't want to like totally trash her for that. But like based on the outfit, like comparatively to the rest is just like, we know yeah. what this is. Yes, like this isn't a winning look. Also with Brooklyn being like, I really wish you had like a full metal bolero. I'm like, bitch, where? Who is making a bolero? out of tinfoil and chicken wire. <laughs> it's just not happening. This is Priyanka, kind of a sleeper hit for the judges. I didn't know how they were gonna feel about this. I liked it cause she had the chains hanging down from the umbrella. That's what made it just weird enough. Could you imagine this look without that? When this came out, I was like, oh, this looks kind of like that really expensive liquid silk, like RuPaul just wore with the blue all wrapped around her. Yes, it looks like screen door. If it's real metal, I wonder how much that like screen door material actually, she could bend it around her body, like wrap it. I do feel in my heart that if she hadn't worn a long, messy, straight wig. It would have been an even stronger look. Agreed. I get where she was going, but the chains kept hitting it and it kept like making it like frizzy and weird, like maybe something up or shorter. Like a short little 60s, like pointed, like like black curly cues to the cheeks, like almost like a bowl cut with some attitude. I think one of the challenges of like unconventional materials is making something look like it's actually clothes. And Lemon's dress, this really looks like almost fabric. She took a material that doesn't usually have great movement and gave it movement. And that's always like very appealing to the eye. It looks great on stage. It catches all the light. I don't think this hair and makeup with this gave it the dimension that it needed. I think she was trying for Cher. What do you think of Alona's look? It is well constructed. It looks clean and it's not like falling apart. So we do have to give props to that. It looks almost so well constructed that I'm like, 
Did they just give you guys cutouts for like chest pieces and shoulders? Yeah, it's pretty amazing how they articulated flat paper to like wrap the shoulder, wrap the titty. Of the three, it did read a little birthday party. It does. Tainomi's was stronger. Yes. Tainomi's had like a masculinity to it and that hair, it was so good. The thing with Alona too is that she wasn't selling it to me that she was a knight. Whereas Tainomi, I was like, she is a warrior. She is defending. She is like, bitch, I'm here. Try to get through me. Just try. Right. To me, especially with her story arc and like, she's been really struggling. And to see this, I was like, she's showing like, bitch, I'm here. Let's look at our friend, Miss Mama. <laughs> I don't know what I'm gonna say about this look because I have a lot of problems with it. And I don't know, I know people love Jimbo, I love Jimbo. Same. Why are you making your midsection spiky and big? Let's take my midsection and make it the widest part except for the bottom of the skirt, I mean. And this 13 Ghosts, Curse of Lola La La Rona makeup and hair. <laughs> like what the f Why are you doing a flat unbrushed wig? Did you know that movie 13 Ghosts was actually supposed to be 14 Ghosts, but Jimmo had a film drag race so she couldn't make it? <laughs> she had a commitment. I guess here's what I like about it. I think it was ambitious in a room full of naked people with things glued to them to really do a full look. This is one of the worst makeup applications I've ever seen on Drag Race. <laughs> I'm serious, this makeup is terrible. It's not great. I always just feel like you can be funny and like be a comedic character and not look crazy. And I say this as a Jimbo fan, like she's probably my favorite from this Love season. Love her. Oh, she's I, great. Gold. Brush the wig, put on the makeup, Mary. And if you're gonna do Marie Antoinette, look at like, so many of the Marie Antoinettes have come through Drag Race and just do that. A different wig. Don't brush the wig. Take it off and put on a new one. I don't get this. It could have been a lot of ways better. That wig looks like it's from a completely different outfit. So what do you think about the drama backstage with Alona and Jimbo? I loved it. I love that this uh, yeah. is Canadian people. <laughs> this is the Canadian version of go back to Party City where you belong. They're like, is... you seem mad. You seem mad too. <laughs> I do love that like when Alona is like yelling at Jimbo and Jimbo yells back. And then she's like, well then shut up. No one wants to hear you either. And Alona's like, well fine. I'll just shut up and be respectful because I'm a respectful person. Same <laughs> tone, know. but 180 to what she thought five minutes ago. <laughs> I wish she'd be quiet. Maybe I will. Something Americans would never do, which is be told to shut up and then reflect. Can you imagine? I think Alona's a really good drag queen and like compare like with her runway last week that blue poodle thing like you really are that bitch so don't like show your ass yes. so fiercely just because you got a bad critique tainomi's literally about to go home and you're like me alona's like i bought a nice costume and i have to work with trash <laughs> it's like <laughs> drag queens are so special because love them or hate them we just get such horse blinders about our own shit. I mean, remember yes. in like All Stars, Milk was crying because he was safe and Thorgy was like, I'm probably going home. And I do think it's funny that <laughs> Alona complained to the point of like the room laughed in like solidarity of like, you know what, this is ridiculous. As much of a brat as Alona is coming off as, I don't know if you feel this way, but like being in drag and being like, oh honey, I'm in drag, this is it. And then being so low where you're like, I'm about to start crying in drag feels like the most degrading thing ever. It's the worst. And whatever amount of pathetic you feel, the wig like multiplies at times 20. Because yes. now you're a crying <laughs> little, you feel like you're dressed as a little girl. You're a crying little girl. And yes. you come from a culture of like, you're a man, you're not supposed to cry. And now, you're crying dressed as something you're not even supposed to be dressed as. <laughs> like, <laughs> this worse. When you look at somebody like Elona having a breakdown, it is because when you read between the lines, she gives a about drag. She gives a huge about the rest of the drag she packed to show off. And she's worried that her journey ends today. And like that in a sense is relatable. Like her thoughts are relatable. The way she's expressing them are like, okay. I mean, we always have to make stuff out of trash. The best on Drag Race, I don't know if this has ever happened where like you do such a bad job that someone's like, do you want my drink? And I'm like, no. And then I'm like, yeah. Yes. <laughs> All right, we find out the winner this week is Rita Baga. Do you agree? Yes, I do. Ultimately, she turned yes. it. She 
She served it. She was, you're right, she was the centerpiece of that collection. She sold it, she committed to it. I agree. I didn't like the bottom, I didn't like the corset, but it's not always about the perfect outfit. It's also about the presentation. Of the whole group too, she seemed the most experienced. She was like, I'm not a costume maker, but I used to be hired to be a club kid, so I was encouraged to use things that weren't clothing a lot. So this is just one of those moments where a drag queen who's been doing drag longer than you has more experience. Yes. But she wins. Like that was like that. See, that's like the arc of this episode where it's like Jimbo's like, well, I work professionally, and drag queens are like, I have to do everything myself because no one else is gonna do it. Literally. Like the only reason I knew how to sell at Drag Race is because I'm six feet tall and I could never fit anything. If I was really petite, I probably would have never learned to sew. That's fair. Especially during like now quarantine times where we literally have to like get our own clothes. Uh, make our own videos, produce, music, like, ridiculous. Write our own videos. I've been too wong fooing the shit out of my apartment for backdrops and just taking all this loose fabric and being like, Wonder Woman! <laughs> everywhere. <laughs> <laughs> all right, in the bottom, it's Tainomi once again, unfortunately, and Alona. Alona freaks out before the lip sync. Girl, we were looking at each other. What did you think of this moment? I'm sitting here sweating alone in my apartment being like, can you imagine, I know this is like, can you imagine being back on Drag Race and a lip sync song coming out, your first season on season seven and looking like in front of Rue, holding up production being like, I can't, I just can't. <laughs> like, <laughs> like I remember on season seven when me and Pearl had a lip sync, I remember her going like, you're my friend, I can't do it. And I remember being like, <sighs> You should leave. Like, like I was like, if you don't want to hundred percent do this, get out, Mary. Because do you think the yes. conversation is gonna get easier? That's like another thing where it's like, to me, this episode for Alona, I was like, have you watched Drag Race before you got on it? You're gonna inevitably have to lip sync and make clothes out of trash. I love so many things about her. I love her looks. I love her personality. I love her makeup. I love that she's First Nation. You can always clock her wearing like beaded jewelry and a lot of authentic like Native American handicrafts. However, Mary, this is only gonna get more ruthless. There's only gonna be less of you. You're gonna be sending people, people, people you know are gonna go home every two days. I could not imagine being on Drag Race and being there and being like, I can't lip sync and have, having to have the judges panel and all the contestants be like, no girl, lip sync, you have to, you got this. Be like, if it is a question, leave. Girlfriend by Avril Lavigne. What a song to go out on, bitch. I love that song. That's fun. That is like a good campy, like it's stupid, but gets stuck in your head. So you can either like do it with high energy or do it jokey. Like the judges, like that's a good song to pander to the judges for and like really be an idiot. Yes. They really did get into it. Like she's like, so whatever. They were kind of playing with each other. We've both been through it. And I think this is the best episode of the season. I loved this challenge and I loved this lip sync. And honestly, it was Tainomi's third time at the bottom. I think she let that whore have it. I would have kept Tainomi. I know it's her third one and that's taboo, but like she did that. It was a, it was a toss up because I feel like Ilona in this lip sync, like this lip sync is a very like, oh my God, hey, and that's, who Alona is as a person, so she did kind of bring it. This was a great episode though, in terms of like drama, the challenge, the tension. Like this episode to me was like, this is so like the root of drag and drag queens making something out of nothing and always getting mad and crazy at each other. Yes, like this really felt like, as far as like momentum wise, the first episode of the season. Like it's like, oh, this is happening now. These girls are comfortable enough to fight and we've seen a few people go home. And once you've seen an elimination, everything feels much realer. Layla, you were such an incredible queen. Thank you so much for joining me today. I'm glad we got you out Thank of you for basically having. retirement to put a wig on. <laughs> Listen, like I said, you know, when I'm not doing this, I'm just waiting to do this. Do you undersell yourself? If you haven't seen Layla before, go YouTube or she's wonderful. And thank you for watching The Pit Stop. You can catch us every week here on the RuPaul's Drag Race YouTube channel, recapping Canada's Drag Race. And next week is Snatch Game. Yes, I am triggered and I will see you there. Do you want everything RuPaul's Drag Race at your fingertips? Then head over to YouTube now and subscribe to the RuPaul's Drag Race channel and you will get all the episodes of everything you ever want, including brand new episodes of Whatcha Packin'. Hi.